of the Holy Mass is brought to you by Mr. and Mrs. Nicolas Padillo and family, Mr. and Mrs. Alfred and Julie Go and family, Dr. Jean Rafanan and family, Mr. and Mrs. Rene Adnanit Avila and family, Mr. and Mrs. Lorenzo Bok and family, Engineer Frederick and Mrs. Wanda Fekabahog and family. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Dear sisters and brothers, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant we pray that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests, and the people added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised their warnings, and scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. Until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths, during all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest while 70 years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God, have the God of heaven has given me, and he has also charged me 
to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever, therefore, among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God, who is rich in mercy because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. 
raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is a gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A blessed Letare Sunday to all. It is always the same principle when we come to the so called the seasons where there is a strong penitential uh, spirit, like for example, Advent. The second Sunday, the second to the last Sunday of that season, for Advent leading to Christmas is called Gaudete. And the second, uh, second to the last Sunday in the season of Lent towards the uh, Paschal Triduum and the Easter season is called Letare. And in Latin, Gaudete and Letare both the same, mean the same thing. While Gaudete is joy, Letare is rejoicing. Okay? So this is a kind of spirit that is always put in the perspective of looking beyond what is what we from what we are preparing that the penitential 
disciplines that we are doing will, will lead us to something that is joyful. And for one today, I would like to appreciate and acknowledge our, our choir because they add the spirit to this being a Leitari Sunday today. You can feel that to your bones, actually. And I'm so, I'm so glad as well no, to have this beautiful, uh, I don't know, og, gitawag ni nilag serendipity. No? In fact, I just realized if, while I was putting on the vestments that my handkerchief is also pink. <laughs> because pink is the color of life. It is something that actually reminds us of the, of the, of the greatness of the God who despite the many different challenges and trials that we undergo, you know, always makes us see a glimmer. As we say in English, there is always a light at the end of the tunnel, however long the tunnel is. And so we, we come to this particular dimension of the celebration. And for the liturgical perspective as well and awareness at the same time, the, the, today or the Leitare Sunday, no, or the fourth Sunday of Lent, is the second scrutiny. I said last Sunday about the first scrutiny of the catechumens preparing for baptism. And today is the second scrutiny. And what is this scrutiny all about? It is actually uh, going or bridging towards the commitment that from the lessons and teachings and doctrines that are being taught, the catechumens, just as we are, also have to now go to the so-called the action dimension. Nga dili lang basta magyawyaw ta, magmemorize ta, magexpress ta, or masulat ta about the faith. It also has something to do with how we are able to bring that into concrete dimension, concrete actions. And for one, third point that makes this season, uh, this Sunday really letare, is we are presented in the cycle B of the readings of the celebration. We are presented coming from the well and the most quoted gospel passage from the Gospel of John. What you have heard, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him may not perish and may have eternal life. Okay? And this is something that I always uh, would, would like to underline because from this very verse itself, we find the acronym gospel. No? And gospel is the good news of salvation, the cause for joy, because God gave his son. And from perspective of scriptures, this is something that what St. Paul was actually also talking in his letter to the Romans, that he did not actually uh, withhold his son for us. And Paul even used the, the comparison that while God saved the, the son of Abraham not to, be, uh, not to be sacrificed and instead gave a lamb in his place, he saved the son of Abraham whom he loves. But now it comes to our part that how much he has loved us because even his own son he gave for all of us. He gave us a gift. That's the meaning of giving. It's not just sending, but it's a gift. It is a free gift that is actually to be responded as well. But the response that should come from us should be understood from the perspective of the conditional sense because that's the description is so that who those who believe in him may not perish but may have eternal life now what is this for us nga nung may man in cebuano uh, unta no nga unta ang motuo kaniya dili mamatay dili mahanaw no nga nung naamay unta it's practically because it now depends on how we respond because we are gifted with freedom in as much as we are loved by God, okay, even to the jealousy of the devil, okay, we still have to be responsible and to be committed to what we want to do, not just from what we say. Because the doing is always the very heart of 
the relationship. Munanga, even in the Mass, no, if, you, if you are familiar with the consecration, so that sins may be forgiven. So it means we have to do our part as well. Dili na mo ingon nga, sige, iampo lang ko, iapi lang ko, o di ba, iapi lang tika. No? Because it is an individual concern. It is an individual response. And that response has something to do with cultivating the life that is God's gift to us. In fact, in today's gospel reading, we hear twice mentioned eternal life. And the first, and this is the first ever mention of the expression eternal life in the Gospel of John. Okay, so if you are if you want to really be familiar with the Gospel of John, the word eternal life is used for the first time in our gospel reading today. Namely, chapter 3, verse 15, and the second one is 16, that the, the famous quotation. But what is eternal life? Eternal life is something that we wait and receive at the end. Because in the Johannine perspective, in the Gospel of John, eternal life begins in the here and now. And that here and now has something to do with our response. Unsay angaya natong buhaton alang sa kaayuhan. Eternal life begins in the right here and now. It is not something that we wait later on. No? And I always use this uh, anecdote about a particular uh, person, two particular persons who died and faced the Lord in the pearly gates. And so St. Peter actually uh, accommodated them. So one was a poor man and the other one was a rich, I, sh I should use the word filthy rich man in the, while he was in the world. And so the first, the first person, the poor man was led to the mansions that, were pre that, are, pre that are prepared for, for, for those who are, as we say in the Beatitudes, blessed are the poor for this is the kingdom of God. And so while the rich man was waiting for him to be accommodated, he was already, ex already excited. Ngayon siya nga, ah, kanang pobre mang galing na siya, gihatagan mang ganit siya mansion. So, mas labo pa siguro yun na ana ako, gingarian yun. But then, when St. Peter came to him, he was led going down to the other side, yeah, to the slum area. No? And while they were walking, Diha siya nakita nga bungalo, isa kanya lang unta ako. But they continued to walk. And then pag-abot dito sa unahan, there was a shanty. Dihay payag. Nga di pagyud kompleto. And then St. Peter said, "Okay, this is your place." And the guy said, "Nganong ingon ani man ang ako ang balay nga kadato na ko sa kalibutan?" And the answer of Peter is, "Yes, because you did not send materials for for the building of your mansion here." No? So what we do in our lives, what we do here on earth, the good things that we do, the virtues that we cultivate, actually are some kind of building materials for the mansion that is prepared for us. And we are so great, greatly and grateful, no? thanking him because everything is prepared for us only and only if we do what he wishes and what he wills for us not only for our own good, but for the good of our brothers and sisters as well, especially those who need not only our prayers, but the things that we can reach out to them. And this is the good news. And this is something that we have to rejoice. The leitare that is put in the perspective of a constant reminder to act and to respond. And it never ends, by the way, because God constantly does remind us whether we like it or not. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
The third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Dear friends, sisters, and brothers, the cross of Jesus reminds us not only of our sinfulness, but also of God's infinite love and mercy. And so full, with full confidence, we acknowledge our weakness as we say, Merciful Lord, listen to your people. May the church remain a living sign of God's love and mercy in times of darkness and despair, we pray. May our government and civil leaders strive to live by God's truth and walk in God's light forsaking the culture of death and corruption, we pray. Merciful Lord, listen to your people. May we become more aware that sin not only offends God, but also wounds us and our community. May we have frequent recourse to the sacrament of penance that reconciles us to God and to one another, we pray. Merciful Lord, listen to your people. May the Lord wash away our hatred, banish violence and terrorism from our midst, and restore tranquility and justice, we pray. May the sick, the elderly, and the suffering realize from our care and attention that they are loved by God, we pray. Merciful Lord, listen to your people. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Merciful Lord, listen to your people. Heavenly Father, make us witness to the spirit of the cross by becoming beacons of peace and hope for our brothers and sisters. We ask this to the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, dear sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and good all we place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and righteous. It is true right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from disordered affections they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without a hand we acclaim. Fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took that chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciple, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my high blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, with Midifil, his assistant bishop, all bishops and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, <coughs> may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say,
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And Let's now share with each other the sign of peace. Shalom. Peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. O oh my God, my only hope, I have placed all my trust in you, and I know I shall not be disappointed. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, 
Illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Act of consecration to sacred to Saint Joseph, O glorious patriarch and patron of the Church, O virgin spouse of the Virgin Mother of God, O guardian and virginal Father of the Word incarnate, in the presence of Jesus and Mary, I choose you this day to be my Father, my guardian and my protector. O great Saint Joseph, whom God has made the head of the Holy Family. Accept me, I beseech you, though utterly unworthy, to be a member of your holy house. Present me to your immaculate spouse. Ask her also to adopt me as her child. With her, pray that I may constantly think of Jesus and serve him faithfully to the end of my life. O terror of demons, increase in me virtue. Protect me from the evil one and help me not to offend God in any way. O oh, my spiritual Father, I hereby consecrate myself to you in faithful imitation of Jesus and Mary. I place myself and all my concerns under your care and protection. To you, after Jesus and Mary, I consecrate my body and soul with all their faculties, my spiritual growth, my home, and all my affairs and undertakings. Forsake me not, but adopt me as a servant and child of the Holy Family. Watch over me at all times, but especially at the hour of my death. Console and strengthen me with the presence of Jesus and Mary, so that with you I may praise and adore the Holy Trinity for all eternity. Amen. Oratio Imperata. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O most holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Señor Santo Nino, have mercy on us. Our Lady of Guadalupe, Our Lady Health of the Sick, Saint Joseph, Saint Raphael the Archangel, San Roque, San Lorenzo Ruiz, San Pedro Calungsod. Before the final blessing, you may be wondering why I did not say that deliver us, O Lord, because it is always understood from the liturgical perspective that if the Our Father has the deliver us from evil at the end, we directly go to that. And also, as I do appreciate the choir, di hagi usak aliluya ngayon gawa. So hopefully, during the season of Lent, especially in the liturgical celebrations, we do away with that word. Although we say that 
The translation is praise the Lord. Praising is always uh, the same, no? praising and glory. But the very word itself is so much what we call, kanang uh, ananga, is oppressed. Because that very word can only be done or can only be said or prayed uh, in, even in solemnities because it's only reserved for the Easter season. But all the rest and all the same, I do appreciate. It gives us the latari experience of the day. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Now bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Eucharist has been offered. Go in peace. of the Holy Mass is brought to you by Mr. and Mrs. Nicolas Padillo and Family, Mr. and Mrs. Alfred and Julie Go and Family, Dr. Jean Rafanan and Family, Mr. and Mrs. Rene Adnanit Avila and Family, Mr. and Mrs. Lorenzo Bok and Family, Engineer Frederick and Mrs. Wanda Fekabahog and Family. flag carrier. The airline that lets you feel the warmth of the nation. Mga kababayan, kuyogi ko ninyo sa paglibot sa Tibuok, Pilipinas, ug Asia, Dinhisa, pasyal tayo! Lunes hangtod biyernes, alas 4.30 hangtod alas 5 sa hapon, dinhilang sa CCTN Channel 47. Sorry, Mom.
ma'am, nalate ko. Nangita pa mong gugog para internet sa kong anak, ma'am. Ay, wala na yung problema. Pag sinisibo! 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 For your internet connection. And for the signal of your cable TV. So fast and straight the transmission to your home. Sinisibo! you to have fiber optics for your viewing experience perfect and clear so far so great and affordable for you to enjoy Cinecibu Cinecibu Television Network Incorporated offers fiber to the home broadband internet bundled with fiber to the home cable TV connection Cebu Television Network Incorporated with its operation in Metro Cebu and the whole province of Cebu soon. And affordable for you to enjoy. Cebu. For inquiries, please visit us at www.cinecebu.com. Cebu, connecting communities, creating connectivities.